for our worship session today. It's our desire that the Spirit of the Lord will be with you wherever you are. For whatever reason you couldn't make it here, we pray a special blessing over your life. We want you to know that it's our desire, though, to have you among us worshiping so that you can be a part of this immediate fellowship. And so we hope to see you next week after you would have watched us today. But in the meantime, stay tuned and may the Lord bless you real good. Earlier on, we did our welcome. I wonder if we left anyone out. As a matter of fact, I wonder if there's anyone who slipped in belatedly. Is there a visitor who uh, is here today? But earlier on, we did a welcome and we might have missed you out because you were not here as yet. If we have any visitor among us who have not been given a special welcome, amen. There's somebody down there. I'm going to ask one of my elders just extract the name of our visitor. We want to recognize you in a special way. We want you to know that we're delighted to have you worshiping with us here in Bridgeport Tabernacle today. And we want you to come back as long as the opportunity presents itself. Yes, Elder Palmer. Praise God. Let us wave to him, everybody. Let us wave to him. We want you to know it's a joy to have you in our presence today. I trust that the Lord will give you a special blessing as you worship with us. God bless you, real good sir. sir. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, praise team, for... Uh, leading us in that segment of praise and worship. What would the church be without effective praise and worship, without wonderful singing? Thank you so much, my sisters who have joined us from uh, Mount Zion. May God bless you in your endeavors. Thank you for singing such beautiful songs that, lift, that lifted the spirits of God's people even today. Amen? Amen. I'd like to recognize the young men who participated or who are participating in where would you stand? 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 Put your hands together for them, everybody. It's a wonderful sight. Amen. It's a wonderful sight. May God bless you real good. Please be seated. May God bless you real good today. Our scripture reading came to us from Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 and 32. I invite you to stand. They on screen. Support is not available right now, so I invite you to turn to Matthew chapter 13 in your Bibles. Might be on your phone or another gadget. That's all right. Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 and 32. Thank you, young Estimel, for reading so ably. Let us re-examine these two short verses. Let us read verse 31 together and then I will read verse 32. Are you there? Say amen if you're there. The Bible says, let's read together, another parable Put ye forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Listen up, everybody. Which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among the herbs and become it a tree 
so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. I want to speak to you today for a short while on what I have entitled a seed called Sinaipis nigra. A seed called Sinaipis nigra. I will clarify very quickly. Bow your heads, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, may the spirit of the living God move upon your people today. Edify us. Fill us with the spirit. Encourage us. Help us to know Jesus who is Lord and Savior. Help us to accept him and make him master over our lives. Father, I must decrease so that you increase. So hide Chris right now, I pray and reveal Christ to your people as I open my mouth. May every word find a resting place and resides in the inner sanctum of your people's heart today. As that is done, I pray that it will take residence there and bear fruits of righteousness. Thank you for hearing me. Glorify yourself in this place today. Magnify yourself in this house today because you alone are God and you alone are worthy in Jesus' name. Would you be seated, everybody? trying to cultivate the right habit and so I will be conscientious today and I promise not to speak too long. A seed called Sinaipas Nicra. Jesus is on a roll and his conversation is trending the subject of seed sowing. And so he tells of the sower who went forth to sow. And he fills in the details of the sower's escapade. The details hit the ears of the listeners and came out with a sound like this. The sower went forth to sow. Some of the seeds fell by the wayside paths, and the birds quickly ate them. Some of the seeds fell where there were rocky ground, and they prospered momentarily. But because of a lack of soil, the sun sucked them dry and the plants died quickly. Some of the seeds fell among thorns and began to grow for a while, but the thorns stymied and stifled their growth and they died quickly. But then Jesus said, some of the seeds fell on good soil and the plants grew well and the farmer had an abundant harvest. Just so there's no ambiguity, he gives clarity to his parabolic expressions, encouraging the people to hear the word, accept the word, and bear fruit, and guard against the enemy of the soul, which is Satan. And so Jesus now, having already fed the people all these words, the people were still hanging around. They wanted to hear more because all that came from the mouth of Jesus offered them hope. All that emitted from the mouth of Jesus gave them something to live by. And so they stuck around to hear more from the master. He obliged their crave by filling their hunger and thirst for righteousness with more eternal verities. 
This segue, brothers and sisters, was smooth as the master's observant eyes fell upon the mustard plants that were all over the place in Palestine. His eyes fell on the mustard plants that were conspicuously protruding above the grass and above the grain with their branches dangling in the gentle breeze, rendering their attraction irresistible to the birds who came to perch in them as they danced from twig to twig, singing among the leaves. He paused contemplatively as he reflected on the beginning of the giant plant, comparatively speaking that is, and he considered the minuteness of the seed. He immediately carves a spiritual lesson from this marvel in nature that he himself authored from the very beginning because everything that was made was made by him, says the word of God. Another parable he put forth unto them, says the Bible in Matthew chapter 13 verse 31. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among the herbs. And it becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof, says Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, Christ uses the growth of the mustard seed to make his point about the kingdom of heaven. How cheerfully pleasant and encouraging it is that Jesus uses the seed that is so small to make a potent point. He lightens the growth process and its result to the kingdom of heaven. Uh, I may I quickly disseminate some information before doing a little celebration and sit down. The mustard seed, ladies and gentlemen, the scientific designation is a Sinaipus nigra. It is often cultivated for its seeds, which are used in the production of condiments like, 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 like you know, spices and mustards and, and, and ketchup. But it has a more significant purpose because it's also cultivated and harvested for its medicinal purposes. But here... In the parable, we find some important lessons that I wouldn't want us to miss today in just these two short verses. I want you to realize that the mustard seed's beginning is small. Did you hear me, everybody? The beginning is small, it is minute, but it grows, it grows, and it expands, it becomes larger and larger, and then when it expands, while it's expanding rather, it spreads its branches, and in the process it attracts and entertain birds. It provides them with rest. A mustard seed measures usually about one or two millimeter in diameter. That's very minuscule. Are you with me, everybody? That's nothing to write home about. Uh, just a little guy that nobody pays attention to. But, but it's buried. And then something magnificent happens after it's buried. Are you with me? The agronomist or the agri-science educator tells me that when a seed is sown, a process called germination ensues. Do we have anyone in this place who understands the process of cultivating something? Well, 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 what's the process of germination, I ask? They enlighten the ignorance of my darkness by telling me that inside the seed is what is called a germ. A germ. Uh, they told me that the germ is the nutrient-rich embryo. 
embryo that is embedded inside that seed and once it's planted it will sprout and once it's planted it will grow into a new plant and begin to produce. Listen to this everybody. When the sower plants the seed. It remains dormant momentarily. It appears as if it's dead. But then it's awakened. With all the watering going on by the farmer. With all the mulching that's taking place around it. It's awakened from its dormancy. A reminder to us ladies and gentlemen. That as children of God. We, we must be ready for that moment when God awakes us from our dormancy. Ellen G. White offers insight from the book Christ Object Lessons when she says the germ in the seed grows by the unfolding of the life principle which God has implanted. Its development depends upon no human power. So it is with the kingdom of Christ. It is a new creation. Its principles of development are the opposite of those that rule the kingdom of the world. So can I quickly tell somebody that God has placed within you that that life principle that can be awakened. Ladies and gentlemen, there is potential running through your very fibers, your very veins, so that nobody is without an excuse. Herein lies the wonderful illustration of the Christian growth. Herein lies the wonderful illustration of the Christian development. The germination process can take place within you and it signals new life and it signals new beginning. Can I tell somebody that if any man is in Christ... He's a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Be all, all things. How many things, everybody? All things are become as new. The German nation process represents the beginning of spiritual life that is bubbling up inside you. Of spiritual life that Christ can bring out. So brothers and sisters, as you move forward in this new year, pray to God that he will enact a spiritual germination in your life so that you you will become productive in Jesus' name. A germ of spiritual life is hidden in every soul. It may be awakened by Christ if we let him. It is quick and powerful. It is the Holy Spirit's influence that's working upon our heart. And it diffuses its influence through the heart. Little by little, Ellen White says it expels counteracting agencies of the world. If we allow that process to take place within us then we will begin to be in tune to spiritual things more and the things of the world will grow strangely dim in the light of God's glory and his grace so then, little by little, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life will become distasteful to us and unattractive to us if, we, if God, if we allow the Lord to work the process of spiritual germination within us. And as soon as a process steers its potential, begin as soon as a process of germination steers within us, ladies and gentlemen, then it will cause the potential within us to begin to set down roots. Focus for a moment on, 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 on roots, uh, roots right here for just a little while and understand the value of the root system because roots represent foundation. Did you hear me everybody? 
Tell somebody foundation. May this lesson never be lost upon you. There's a value in having a firm foundation. I say this for the sake of our kids. There's a value in having a firm foundation. I say this for the sake of our young people. Look at our young men. There's a value in having a firm foundation. Uh, help, help them to know that the Lord loves them and that they should love the Lord. There's a value in having a firm foundation. Every plant that will prosper and every plant that will bear fruit must have a proper root system to be effective in its production. And so don't wait on the teachers in the classrooms to give your children or your young people a firm foundation. It starts in the home. Come on, say amen. Don't wait on somebody outside to play that role for you. It starts within you. Give them a firm foundation for when that seed is planted and the potential of germination begins to stir up inside, then a firm foundation must must be sought in order for them to start moving upward and producing fruit. But here's something else that I'd like to tell God's people. If you're going to have a firm foundation, if you're going to have an effective root system, hmm, that part of your job relies heavily on you handling dirt. All right, somebody missed what the pastor is trying to say right here. And so I might as well just back up a little bit and help you to understand what I am purporting. Uh, uh, if you're going to have an effective root system, if you're going to have a proper root system and be effective in your production, that part of your job relies heavily on you handling dirt and how you handle dirt. Am I preaching to somebody today? So don't you worry too much, ladies and gentlemen, about those who are throwing dirt on you. Don't you worry too much about how much dirt you're covered under. If your potential is going to be realized, then you must be covered under some dirt. And the agronomist will tell you that it depends on how you ha handle the soil, how you handle the dirt. That will determine your production production level your success relies on you handle hey mustard seed if you're going to grow your success depend on you handling dirt there is a little saying that goes to don't worry about those who are throwing dirt for there's a little saying that goes like this he who throws dirt loses ground so, while some folk are busy throwing dirt on you, they're just providing more mulching. They're just providing more manure. They're just providing more potential for you to rise above ground and realize your full potential in Jesus. I must have told you the story about the old donkey that was owned by the farmer that fell in the hole and when the farmer looked in he felt it would be too difficult to extract the donkey from the hole and he made an excuse that it's too old and frail and instead of taking it out he decided I'm going to just cover it 
buried with dirt. But every time the farmer would throw the dirt on the donkey's back, down there in the hole, the story says the donkey, he just shook off the dirt and he stepped on it. And every time the farmer throws more dirt, the donkey just shook off the dirt and stepped on it and it climbed higher and higher because of the dirt that was thrown on its back until finally it was out of the hole. Hey neighbor, I've got to tell you, your growth and development is dependent on how you handle the dirt that is thrown your way. I am just trying to tell you about a seed called uh, Sinaipas nigra. Can I clarify quickly and tell you that Sinaipas nigra is just the scientific designation but but if I would break it down simply for you it is simply the black mustard Oh, you didn't realize I was coming there. I'm saying it's the black... Can I make this thing a little more relevant? Can I make this thing a little more meaningful for your sake today? In light of the fact that we now celebrate Black History Month, may I contemporize and flavorize? It's a seed called Sinaipas nigra. It's a black mustard, a small seed... But somehow Jesus looks around and he chooses a small seed, the black mustard, to make an illustration about the kingdom of heaven. Can I tell God's people today that as we celebrate black history and as we celebrate the Lord, that you are a Sinaipas Nigra, a black mustard, but there's real potential that God has wrapped up within you and that you can rise above ground because of what the Lord has placed within you. I turn the pages of history just to remind myself of the great potential that God has placed within the black race. And I'm not here highlighting any race above the other. I'm just doing this in recognition of what we are now celebrating because of all the hurts that God's people of this race has gone through. I just want to give you uh, an encouraging word today. Uh, you are a seed. A seed called Sinaipus Nigra. A black mustard seed. Nevertheless Jesus took time out uh, to recognize you among all people and he pointed to you and he said you see that tree that has grown. You see that tree that has become strong. Do you see that tree that has become a place for birds to find nest and to find rest. It is a Sinaipus nigra, a little black mustard seed. But see how the mustard seed has grown. It has become a strong tree. I searched the pages of history. I don't necessarily need to remind you of the great luminaries of the past. Uh, uh, Brother Daniel highlighted one of them earlier on today, W.E.B. Du Bois. Nevertheless, God has provided us with so many Sinaipas, Nigra, black mustard seeds that burst out of the ground and became greater in this world that we know. Did you remember Harriet Tubman? 
Oh, she was just a little Sinaipus Nigra, but she burst out of the ground, and because of her, many slaves were led to freedom. Do you know of Rosa Parks? She decided, I'm not going to sit in my seat anymore, but the potential within her came into the process called germination, and she burst open from the back of the bus, and then a great movement will start. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Might I remind you of Martin Luther King? He was a Sinaipus Nigra, a little black mustard seed, but God used him to champion a campaign of nonviolence, a campaign of justice, so that people of color can have recognition. He burst open out of the pack because of a process called germination and today we are reaping some of the benefits can I remind God's people that all these luminaries only set an example but the same potential that is found that was found within them is the same potential that is found within us today hear me brother hear me sister you are a Sinaipus Nigra, a black mustard seed, and the Lord wants to use you until you come into your full potential and fulfill his glory. I go back to the beginning and I look at the seed it's small, it's minuscule, it's minute, but God specializes in using small things. And God specializes in using small people. He used a little shepherd boy called David with a little sling and five little stones to fall a giant. He used a little boy with, 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 with five loaves and two fishes to feed a great multitude of people. He used a little maid in Naaman's household to remind the great man that there's a God in Israel. God specializes in using small things to make great things out of them. I'd like somebody to know before you go that even though you are obscure, you are not seen, you are not talked about, you are not trumpeted, you are not highlighted, never Nevertheless, God is able to use you to fulfill his glory. The farmer sets out deliberately to plant the seed. And look what happens. God has deliberately planted you right here in this place today. He planted you and he placed within you the germination principle. And the great thing is for the germination principle to be enacted, it's not dependent on you. But the farmer has got to make sure that the ground is favorable. He has to keep watering and nurturing. I am not preaching humanism today. I am not telling you that the potential is all within you and you can just accomplish it for yourself. No, but it's the farmer, it's the Lord that's working the process all the time to get you where he wants you to go. If it's it's not the farmer who does the mulching, then you will not work. God is busy preparing you so that you can burst open in the germination process and become what he wants you to be. Are you hearing me somebody? So don't you worry about your obscurity, but the mustard seed will grow. Watch this. See how the mustard seed has grown. 
bursting open the soil from whence it was sown, from obscurity to conspicuity, from ambiguity to superfluity. It springs and it sprouts and it gradually increases and then it shades needy birds among its branches. This seed indeed is a kingdom seed and it will flourish if nourish on grace it must feed it was less than all the other seeds before but now it stands stately for all else to adore and when the result of this faithful seed appeared nothing but to God's kingdom it compared so go now and emulate this process that you have shown and see how the mustard seed has grown the farmer buried it at first, uh, can I bring somebody to a point uh, in his or her life uh, that they're fighting to get out of right now? Uh, you're in a rut and you think there's no way out. Uh, you're down there underground uh, and you think that there's no way out. You are buried, covered in misery, buried, covered in pain, uh, buried, covered in hurt, uh, buried, covered in things of the past uh, that you can't seem to get beyond but can I tell somebody that it is when you are buried it is then that your potential will come to shine somebody buried you but forgot that you were a seed and you know what happened when a seed is buried you missed your shout I said somebody buried you but forgot that you were a seed they buried you and thought that you were dead they buried you and thought that you would have remained there trying to get rid of your potential but you are a seed called Sinipus Nigel this Sinipus Nigra has got me thinking about a seed that they buried and thought they would have kept him buried. It's a seed called Jesus Christ who was born of a virgin Mary came to this earth through the womb of that virgin but before long they buried him in a borrowed tomb but they forgot that he was a Sinipus Nigra, a little mustard seed. And in a short while, after resting Friday night, after resting all day Sabbath, and after resting Sunday night, that little Sinipus Nigra, that little mustard seed, started a rumble, started a shaking. An earthquake took place, and out of the bowels of the belly of the earth, he arose, and he got up declaring, all power, all power is in my hand. I have the keys of gates of the gates of hell. I was dead, but I'm alive, and behold, I will live forevermore. I praise God that even if we have been buried, God always finds a way to get us up again. Somebody ought to praise God because you will not stay under for long. But God has placed within you that potential to get up and start nurturing birds around you. I want to say this quickly before I sit down. Your potential is not fully realized until you become beneficial to others around you. And so this is what the mustard seed did. It grew, it became greater than the other herbs around. And because it became so great, it started attracting the birds for them to come and play and rest and have nest. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, your Christian potential is not fully realized until you begin 
begin to become rest and nest and shelter to somebody else. So ask yourself this. Ask yourself this. Ask yourself this. Have I become that great tree that the Lord planted the seed to become? Am I beginning to become rest and nest for the birds of the air for somebody else? Are my Christian principles and values bearing fruit where I have become a blessing to my neighbors? Am I at that place where my growth have been stunted? Or am I at that place where I've realized my full potential or I am realizing my full potential and have become what the Lord of trees want me to be. A great strong tree. That's when Jesus makes the comparison. It is like the kingdom of heaven. So here's a challenge today. How are you doing spiritually? Have you become what the Lord planted you to be? Here are the different categories. For some reason, some people have remained dormant, have allowed the ground, the earth, the dirt to be a distraction and a covering for under, from under which you cannot burst out and realize your full potential. That's not what the Lord intended. So brothers and sisters who have been genuinely hurt, who have been hurting for too long, ask the Lord to use that dirt as mulch, as manure for you to burst open from the soil and grow for Jesus. I wouldn't be insensitive today. This is church. I know some people's potential have been stunted and their growth have been stymied. Their, 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 their upward movement stifled because of the dirt. But it's the dirt that will enhance your growth. And the strength of your limbs come on and say amen. And so brothers and sisters, this is designed for you. If you're caught in the trap for too long, it is time for your full potential to be realized. It is time for you to let go and burst through the dirt and eventually you will begin to attract the birds of the air. I mean folk will begin to look on. They will see Christ in you. And be led to glorify the Father in heaven. That is something to rejoice about. I'm going to ask the praise team to sing a song. I'm going to ask the praise team to sing a song. And I'm going to ask somebody 
to start the germination process today i'm going to ask somebody to start the healing process today i'm going to ask somebody a backslider today a non-member today someone who has been in the church for for very long you might not even backslidden but somehow the dirt instead of enhancing your potential is Timing your growth, but in Jesus' name, you can get it right today. Sing a song for us. I'm calling on you today to get right with God. You are a Sinaipus knight. Black mustard. But the Lord has planted you. Come on, sing a song. For a reason. For a purpose. And that is that you will grow and glorify him. But something has been hindering you. In the name of Jesus. You're going to get it right today. Would you stand everybody? Would you stand everybody? We're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You need Him. You are important to survive. To me. I need you to. So the altar is open today to anybody and everybody who knows that God is placed within you. We're all a part of God's body. That germination principle. Agree with me. But for some people, it's been hard to realize. It is it's been hard to come by. Some people have suffered. Dirt been thrown their way. Been thrown at them. But today, let that dirt become manure. Burst through it and for begin you, to bear fruit you so if you're me, down there and it's I your desire you, I need you to, to grow like the mustard seed you you've been in church for long I you. but your potential has not been realized God wants to start that process in your life today you've been struggling you in the soil for long in the dirt for long god wants to stir up that principle in you come on from where you're standing today walk to the you. altar today you pray for me i love you and let the lord do it for you, you. sing that song I for us you is that you words from my mouth is that you I today you. I need is that you today are you that one who needs the Lord to survive? Come on and don't pretend. You are, don't you pretend today. Are don't pretend. To me. I need you to Walk to the altar survive. and say to the Lord, I need you to survive. I'm about to pray. I promise not to be long. I'm about to pray. I'm about to pray. Listen to the voice of the preacher. They're still coming. Praise God. Folk are still coming. Folk are still coming. Folk are still coming. Don't just watch your neighbor coming for victory. Don't just watch your neighbor 
walking for deliverance but you need that victory in your life too you need that deliverance also who else needs the Lord to survive let us reconcile with God today is there somebody else praise God who else needs the Lord to survive they're coming we're going to be patient with you they're coming they're coming they're coming amen they're coming they're coming they're coming a mustard seed that's what you are and God does not only place within you the potential to be doctors and lawyers and nurses and agronomists and, 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 and computer technicians and preachers but God has placed within you the potential to grow into spiritual giants so that others like the birds flocking to the tree so that others will be drawn to you will be attracted to you because of how you would have grown spiritually are you down there today still and you need to make a recommitment to Christ are you down there you once walked with the Lord and you need to make a recommitment to Christ if that is you this appeal is for you don't stay buried because God knows some people took a step back because somebody threw some dirt I know I know it is true it should not happen uh, God has not designed his church for that to happen but it will happen given the nature of this world it will happen But now is the time. The preacher reminded you today. Now is the time. To let that dirt work for you. Let it become mulch for you. Is there somebody else? Who needs to make a recommitment to Christ. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. We're about to pray. Come on down. Come on. Come on down. Come on down. Father, we need you to survive. Those who walk to the altar have acknowledged that we need you to survive. In so many ways, O oh Lord. The Sinaipus Nigra, the black buster, that small seed. Has endured years of pain and hardship, disrespect, disdain. So from a humanistic point of view thank you for the recognition and the reminder that in spite of its minuteness in spite of it its seeming insignificance you have placed within it germination power and you 
can enact that germination principle. So we pause, oh God, sensitively to recognize the significance of this Black History Month and reflect on what black people throughout this world, even here in the United States of America with its unique side of the story have endured and we pray that our God will continue to bring us relief yes, yes. and father we dare not speak only in past in past tenses or past participles but God you are a God of justice, and injustice seems to be reigning supreme even today. So we evoke our God of mercy to stand up for his people. Then, oh God, most importantly, and at the principle of spiritual germination in our lives and cause us to grow and become spiritual giant trees producing fruit of righteousness so that our work on earth will be meaningful so that mankind will get to know about Jesus whom to know is life eternal. Thank you, God, for the words that were spoken today. If someone was down, I pray that someone will be up today. If someone was hopeless, I pray that the fires of hope have been rekindled. I play, pray that the flames of hope is now flickering in somebody's eyes. I pray that as a people of God, that people from all nations, and all classifications of nations, be it white classification or black, or red, whatever the classifications are, we realize that in Jesus Christ, we are all one. We're all human beings. We're all brothers and sisters. So thank you for hearing us. May your name be glorified today. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.